Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. I'm just watching a little news over to the side because in a second I want to talk a little bit about this situation, the school shooting, but really about securing our schools, actually what the problem is, uh, and, and, and the long-term solution, securing our schools short-term and long-term. Whether it's going to be possible to do it long term, I'll tell you why I doubt that. We'll get into that in a second. A couple of things that I want to uh, say first. By the way, the website is blowing me out. Uh, it's just the second day uh, that it's been up. Orders are just overwhelming us for the books. And I went up today uh, to the uh, post office to pick up to see, you know, what kind of, to, to drop off a bunch. I shipped a double armload of books out today, and there was a bunch more orders. I sold out. So I've got orders now coming in. Uh, I'm going to try to email everybody uh, to let them know that uh, they're back. Or they'll, they'll be coming soon. So I just put in a big order this morning. They Amazon says they'll have it delivered to me on the 9th of April. So if they do, and a lot of times they get them to me before then. Uh, if uh, if they do, then they'll go out on the tenth after I stay up all night signing them and addressing them and packing them away, and we'll get them out to you. So if if it's a few extra days till you get your books, don't worry, they're coming to you. And thank you so much. I've I've never been inundated like this in orders. I think that website, by the way, I didn't tell everybody what it was, but I always I've been putting it down here in the information. It is stonemont.us, not stonemont.com, stonemont.us. Uh, for those of you who have read the books, you know what Stonemont is. And on the Stonemont US website, uh, you can you'll see the links to well to this channel, to the American Reversion channel, to the uh, Prepping for Prosperity channel. Actually, I'm going to have our webmaster put on the Stonemont Church channel. Uh, also on that is kind of the hub of everything that we do. And then you can also order all the books uh, right off of there. Uh, and in the past, you could get them through Amazon. And you can still get them from Amazon. Matter of fact, they'll get them to you fast. Uh, and you can get them from Amazon. Well, you all know what I'm talking about. For those who don't, the books are all listed down down there in, in the links. You can go see them. The Stonemont series. Everything you need to know about preparing for, surviving, and rebuilding after a total collapse, right? Uh, but you've always been able to get them from Amazon and either trade paperback, you know, like this. There's the first one, the reversion, or in Kindle. Can't get Kindle from me, naturally, but you can get the paperback signed. And you can get hardbacks signed, too. Uh, so they're a little bit slower, but what happens is is that I, I order a bunch, and they ship them to me, and then I sign them, and I put them in the mail and, and uh, get them out there. So, you know, that's why it takes a, a little more time. I do want to say something that I got some orders on the website and I had said that anybody who orders all of the, all the entire set, all six books, I'm going to include a free Stonemont notebook. People are loving these and, and it really came out great. Isn't that beautiful? It's just, it's a notebook in which you can keep your lists and notes and things. And on the back, it says, tells you a little bit about Stonemont. Uh, but on the website, I noticed that our, our webmaster had not gotten the sixth book up yet. So I've got some orders for just five books. But you guys, I'm going to stick this in for you all, too, because you, you ordered what you thought was the whole series, and I want you to have one of these. So um, however many, if you only ordered five, don't worry, you're going to get it. Uh, I read something out of there yesterday. Something else that I learned yesterday, and that is that Joe Fox can read my books better than I can. <laughs> if you all happened to see him yesterday, he was reading a section out of my, my latest book, which is uh, Hostages to Fortune, and he had just got his copies down there, and he's included. I include, I started including the, uh, the Vikings, the Shofarians, Joe Fox, because I believe in what they're doing down there, and I believe that they would actually survive the kind of collapse that I talk about in my book series. So I wanted to get farther into that and talk about what other kind of groups. You know, there will be all sorts of groups that will, will rebuild after a total collapse. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, the Vikings or the Shofarians are one of those groups. And so he read a section of that on his channel yesterday. And he, 
He's got a bad cold, and he still did it better than I did. I've got to learn that. Okay, getting down to this. Um, oh, by the way, I want to thank, I know, just one more thing. Hey, if you're tired of hearing about this, you're not really a stone monitor, and so go to a channel uh, that'll tell you how the world's ending tomorrow. And ah, uh, I, I want to thank you all, all of you who, who include notes and letters to me in your, in your um, book orders. They mean a lot to me. I read them. I read them to my wife. Uh, there have been a few that brought tears to my eyes about how you read th my books to, to older people in your family, to some who are in hospice, who are some, whatever. Some, I just got, just got one uh, uh, in the mail today from a, one of our esteemed uh, people from Middle Tennessee that'll tell you who you are. I read your letter. Uh, thank you. When I come, and, and he said that, uh, uh, actually, I guess somebody joined their group down there and, and told them about my book, and now I guess they're they're reading my books, and, and he just ordered a set, and I'm going to be in Middle Tennessee. He, he says, hey, if, next, if you're ever in Middle Tennessee, uh, let me know. We'll, we'll put you up and, and, uh, and feed you for no charge. Well, I wouldn't impose on you for putting this tribe up, but uh, hey... I'll give you a call and, and we'll accept dinner on our way through. We're trying to make our southern trip uh, this summer. So thank you for the invite. I get, I get those and thank you so much. Uh, our schools. The latest school shooting down in Nashville at that Christian school, no surprise. <clears throat> as soon as I heard it, I knew one thing. And that was, now, <clears throat> one thing, no, it didn't, it didn't surprise me. <coughs> I knew one thing, there's going to be a mental health issue here, okay? Naturally, the loser in chief and everybody's going to be out there dumping on, on the drums because this feeds into their call for a ban on uh, Second Amendment items. Um, you know, which makes has made some wonder over on the Patreon channel. Um, made it wonder about this situation down there. I'm not. I'm not going to address those those questions. Uh, I want to address the deeper issue, and that is that these things do happen, um, and that's because of mental health. When I started. These things did not happen when I was on the job. You had people that you would call nuts, you know, but, but mainly they were just mean. And they hadn't been raised right. And they were animals. And they lived like animals, and they fought like animals, and they killed each other. And uh, they lived like you couldn't imagine that a human could live. At that time, it was was pretty much sequestered into certain elements of society, the very lower, lower socioeconomic level of, of no particular race, because I see it, in, I, I, I work ghettos of, of uh, white and black, there's no different except to music. Um, but that didn't, this stuff did not happen. This started happening, this is a more recent development when I first wor started working at the hospital, and I think it was 2009, I'm not sure. I don't keep track of dates like some people do. It was very rare. And I worked kind of, uh, in my office was in a country club hospital. I didn't want to work. I just took the job because it was hospital security. It gave me something to do while I was writing my books. Um, and I didn't do much except drink coffee and hang around the ER uh, galley and and eat their food and occasionally look menacing if I had to. Other than that, there wasn't much to do. If we had one SI, which means suicidal ideation, a year, it was unusual. If we had one drunk a year, it was unusual. Like I say, it was a little country club hospital in a very affluent part of town. That's why I worked there. I didn't want to fight people anymore. Um, by the time I left, and I still have some of the guys call me, by the time I left, it was unusual if there were not, if there was not at least one SI. When I walked in in the afternoon and I walked through the ER, 
I was surprised if there wasn't at least one person, usually a young person, usually a teen or early 20s, in an observation uh, room, all dressed up in their, their blue paper jumpsuit because they were suicidal. Uh, and there were many times there were more, there were, there were times I'd walk in and there would be three in a row every night. And then, of course, you get the overdoses, and we started having them all the time. Started having the drunks all the time. And then we were fighting all the time. What's the difference? The difference is society. The difference is parenting. Parents aren't parenting. We have weak men, boys really, that can't raise their young men and can't teach their young women what's right and what's wrong. We have mothers who are overly concerned with themselves and their own activities and their own shopping. I, it was not unusual. I, I could tell what the problem was as soon as I saw somebody and it's the parents. I'd walk in there and there'd be some, some poor kid in there. Cause, and I'll say this, some people will blame the kids. I never blame the kids because I never knew a kid that screwed himself up. And I've known a lot of screwed up people, but they didn't screw themselves up unless it was psychiatric, not psychological. And then it wasn't them, it was something else. Uh, it was the parents, it's always the parents. And some people may get upset about that. Now, but I could tell. So there'd be some young person, you, you know, a, a girl, often a girl, more frequently later, guys. And then come in having just swallowed a bunch of stuff, you know, that, you know, some serious, some not, some a call for attention, some actually tried it. Um, there are those who will say it's all a call for attention. No, it's not. Um, some people just survive because of their own ignorance. They didn't take, they didn't know what to do. Um, and as, as soon as they... Now, those who were just calling for attention, as soon as we processed them, the first thing they would ask for was either a remote control for the TV or their cell phone. Now, of course, they couldn't have a cell phone in there. But after a while, the doctors, just to settle them down, okay, let them have their phone. And then they were in there, and I'm sure they were saying, hey, look at me, I'm in the hospital, I'm coming here, and everybody's, because now they're the center of attention. You know why they had to be the center of attention? Because they weren't the center of their parents' attention. Very simple. And as soon as mom or dad got there, uh, if dad got there, he popped in for a few minutes and then he left. If mom got there, she went in there and instead of going over there and wrapping her arms around that kid, and I know a lot of people here will say, well, maybe they've just had it up to here with the kid. Hey, they've had it up to here with the kid because they didn't raise the kid right and the kid needs your raising and your attention and your parenting. So here again, it doesn't come back on the kid. Don't tell me that, okay? Um, and as soon as the mom said a couple of things, the mom would be over in the corner, sitting on a chair, you know, probably t telling all of her friends or posting on Facebook, oh, so and so's in the hospital again. SI, she took some pills, and she she what's happening now is mom is I'm the center of attention again because my daughter is okay. That's it. Look, parenting sucks nowadays. That's why we have these problems. Yeah, there are some good parents out there. There are some good parents out there. And they are struggling to bring up their kids in a decaying and collapsing society that is decaying and collapsing because of the weak-ass parents who won't raise their kids, who won't sacrifice their own lives, their own interests, their own shopping, their own golf, their own getting with the boys and sitting around like a bunch of overgrown boys at 40 years old playing on their video games and raise their children. This is the cause of the school shootings. I wasn't surprised to see that this person was a transgender. I wasn't surprised at all. And I'm sure many of you weren't either. And I don't remember whether it's a man to woman, woman to man. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. There's a problem. And the problems with parents. And the problems with a, a, a government and a society that has excused, not just excused, but, but 
celebrated aberrant behavior. Until that is solved, and I don't think it will be, maybe ever, or perhaps things have just have to get a lot worse. How much worse can they get? They can get a lot worse. Maybe after things get a lot worse, maybe then it gets solved. I don't know. We, I can't see that far down the road, and nobody else can either. Um, but until then, we need to protect ourselves. And that's what I mean about Fortress America. We need to make sure that the schools, the hospitals, the, the businesses, uh, what are the churches, these are all the soft targets that are targeted by these shooters. You know, the, the, the idiocy that, that bubbles in the brains of people who don't understand that is amazing. Okay. These are soft targets. They need to be hardened targets. My, uh, now, now, this one, it seems like a side door was left open. So I'm going to give you the, the remedy for, for stopping this stuff. And it's not difficult. It doesn't take an Einstein to know this. I'm not going to charge, I'm not going to go to the school district and pass myself off as an expert and charge them $120,000 to, to give them a security plan. It's easy, guys. Uh, on this one, a side door was left open. That can't, you, you can't do things like you used to do. In Uvalde, apparently somebody blocked a door open. Okay, there we go. Access control is number one. Access control. One way into a school through a secure area. Simple as that. And there has to be armed security. I mean, to get into my kid's school... You can get onto a military base easier than you can get into my kid's school. You have to go out there at a camera outside of, of a, a, a double entryway. The camera, the voice in the camera says, uh, who are you? Identify yourselves. And who are you here to see? You have to hold up your driver's license for them to see and read and take a picture of. Tell them who you're here to see. And when I've gone up with Kelly, she gives her a driver's license. And, and they've known me for years. They know who I am. They always say, and who is the gentleman behind you? Why? Because they want my voice in, on rec record and they want my, my ID to get the picture of. And then we come into the Sally Port. Okay. Now, there are some things they could improve on this, but that's good. That's more than a lot of, of places have. They need that, and then they, they need for that, that sally port to be secured and have, now in our kid's case, you can see right into the office and it's not bulletproof glass. It should be. The person should not get through there or there without being thoroughly screened if we want to stop these shootings. Uh, and then be buzzed through into a, a secondary secure area. And there should always be armed security there. Now, we have a, a, met all the district in our district has school resource officers. Matter of fact, one got into a shootout. Well, that was a different district, but it was only about a mile and a half from here. He got into a shootout with a kid who... who uh, uh, brought a gun to school and pulled the gun when they were searching his backpack. But you know what? The kid didn't get inside the school. He shot the resource officer. The resource officer shot him. Didn't kill him. Kid's on his way to prison. Okay. He came from a dad who's in prison. And he didn't live around here. He, he was bussed in from another area. So you make it, and, and that school resource officer or that armed guard or whoever you want it to be, I don't care, stays, and it's just like the old fishbowl in, in, in a prison. They stay in their room behind ballistic glass watching everything. And they don't leave there to go chat with people, to walk around the school, because this is the only access point that is open. Every door should be self-closing. Every door should have alarms on it. If there's a door that didn't, didn't secure, there should be somebody going, not the school resource officer, 
because he shouldn't leave his post unless you want two of them. Somebody, the custodian, should go check it and make sure that it's secured. And if something's wrong with it, they need to fix it today. And that school resource or that armed guard needs to stay there and watch everything. And nobody should be able to take a backpack, uh, anything in, uh, to that school during school hours. Simple as that, you know. Because you don't need a backpack to take a lunch to your kid who forgot lunch. Um, that's how you do it. It's not difficult. And there will be people who say, I don't want to live in a world where that's necessary. Well, guess what? You do. That's the world. If you want to ensure, because, you know, I hear these people saying, if it just saves one life, well, they don't mean that. They're just trying, they're, it's, that's the old virtue signal. If it just saves one life, well, they'll be happy to ban all guns if it just saves one life, but they don't want to lock down a school, which would ensure pretty much as close as you can that it will never happen. Now, is, is that going to secure the parking lots? No. Is that going to secure the buses? No. Okay. If we want to turn into Israel, uh, we've got a lot more to do but it will secure the schools. And as some, so, so for those who don't say, I don't want to live in a school like that, well, or in a world where that's necessary, well, you do live in that world, and now it's just your, your choice as to whether or not you're willing to, to step up and do what's necessary to make sure that our schools are secure. And after that, our hospitals, now most of them are private, they need to assume the, the, the expense of that. And, you know, uh, the expense of doing this not near for what they put into their stadiums or their parties during the year. And that's the truth. Uh, and uh, as far as that's why I don't send my kids to public school, I get that. I understand. There, there is a concern there. If, if our schools weren't uh, as secure as they are, I wouldn't be as secure as I am about their security. But, uh, but any place that's a soft target needs to address this. Churches the same way. I'm not saying that, because uh, I'm a big open church person. I don't think that churches should close their doors at night. I don't think they should lock them at night, because in my opinion, that's God's house. And if you build something that's so expensive that you're concerned with people stealing it, rather than keeping them out of where they might want to go in and pray when they're having a tough time in the middle of the night, you're not the church for me. I know, I know, I've gone, I've gone over this, I've had arguments with other pastors, so often I don't care, okay? You cannot serve God and mammon. If you've made a church that is so fancy, you lock people out to secure your baubles, revisit your priorities, pastor. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's the thing. The long-term solution to this is a reversion of society. It's a, a, a complete revival of what this country used to be. But I don't think that's coming. And until it does, or unless it does, the only way is to harden these targets, but remember at the bottom of this is always, at the bottom of it is not a gun. It's mental health. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. I just needed to get that off my chest. Uh, be interested to hear your all's thoughts. Remember, you can get the books now. Let me get, I didn't even have these ready. I wasn't going to make a commercial out of this. But just to let people know who are still here, who are the stalwarts who stayed with us through the whole thing? The entire series now is available of the Stonemont series. All six books, The Reversion, The Revival, The Renewal, and Appeal to Heaven, The Blessings of Freedom, Hostages to Fortune. I'm getting pretty good at that, aren't I? Uh, all of them available not only on Amazon, but now through our website. I have to check and make sure the webmaster has put the sixth book up there. If he hasn't, he will soon. And anybody who buys the entire set off the website, I'm going to throw this one in for free for you. And all of you folks, uh, if, if I ran out before your order got to me, don't worry. I've got another big shipment coming in, like I say, on, on April 9th. 
So I'll get them out on the 10th, and I might, I might just put in for another order too because the way these are going, I better be ready. And I thank you for it. Thank you for, thank you for all your kind words. I'm glad that so many of you are enjoying the series and getting so much out of it. I love reading your letters. It means a lot to me. Um, if you're not with us on Patreon, I do put extra stuff over there. And, and I've been talking about some stuff that might apply to, to what's going on. And I probably will more uh, with these shootings. We'll see. But if you're not with us there, I always put the, the link to the Patreon channel down below as well. So until tomorrow or whenever I shoot the next one, um, remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And I'll probably see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.